What is going on guys? Wiser here and I am coming to you with a special One Hive Labs uh, video where I am here with my good friend Kadic and we are going to discuss the new update. We uh, we like to, you know, all the YouTubers kind of get out there right away and put out these update videos when we really don't know how it how it's gonna sort of pan out right like me and and i were talking earlier this week we did kind of want to do it a little bit earlier but at the same token we wanted this update to roll out and for us to be able to hands-on see it before we kind of started commenting on it and, and and just to help you know the viewers give you guys a better perspective on what we think now that we've actually had our hands in the, in this update and sunk our teeth into it so uh like i said i'm here with Kadic. how you doing my friend hey man doing good um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip over and uh, show some replays from the last Invicta War. It wasn't too, uh, too, too crazy. 77-66 here for, slow, or for Invicta over Slovenia United. Um, but let's just jump right in and start discussing um, what this epic, groundbreaking Clash of Clans update um, it means to us. It means to the war community. Um, so obviously there's a lot of new content. Uh, what, what do you want to start, start with here? Um, I think we should uh, start with the, the upgrades. Uh, it's the easiest way to go. Um, I mean, let's start with the Lava Hound, I suppose. That's the first thing uh, mentioned in, on the sneak peeks. And I, we think it's amazing. Yep. Um, it does great at Tunnel 9. I mean, Tunnel 9 gets access to it through uh, Clan Castles. So right now it opens up for uh, Air Attacks again at Tunnel 9, even though um, it still is hard against good bases to do an Air Attack. It's, it's kind of doable to defend against it either way, but you can get away with so much more um, errors in your attack yeah. with a, a max level love out now. Absolutely, and we were talking about, uh, like, Town Hall 9 obviously has different weights, right? A low Town Hall 9 could really, really get beat up, I think, by uh, by air now because, because of that fact, because of that max hound is just a beast. Yes, it's amazing. Uh, for example, if you don't have maxed out air defenses, and you throw a max lava hound at them. I mean, a tunnel nine is not going to do much against it. It's crazy how good it is. Uh, I've tried it myself in the friendly challenges, of course, and I've gotten away with way more air defenses that were still up um, compared to that I needed to get down, and still get away with the three star. Yep. I mean that that dude is so big. You can make a couple of mistakes mid raid and still adjust and get the three star nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. If your spell placement is on par and your loon deployment is on par, you can now a lot of times, not always, obviously, get away with three hounds for three air defense and um, max air defense. We're talking, um, not max, but max for town hall nine. Yep. I mean, not I always. Not, sorry. I was just going to say, not always, obviously. A, a lot of it depends on the base and depends on your execution. However, it's it's become a possibility now. Yeah, it definitely is. And at Town 10 level, and that's where it becomes interesting, because uh, Town 11s can now dip down with uh, maxed out air attacks with balloons level 7, which uh, came in this patch as well. As, uh, so <clears throat> with all of the Town 10 bases being geared heavily towards uh, defending Valkyrie attacks, this is a viable option now for Town 11. So for Town 10 base building, it's going to be tough now. Yep. I mean, yep. mm, oh my, it's uh, it's going to be really hard to defend the bullies, which makes it all the more important for Town 10s to uh, step up and uh, get Town 11s. Yeah, you really see the game moving forward, right? And and bolstering a little bit the, uh, the Town Hall 11s and... I hate to say it, but starting to slowly get away from Town Hall 9 a bit, right? I know the you know the game's really starting to focus a lot on uh, the Town Hall 11 and 10, um, sorry, the Town Hall 10 and 11 levels. <clears throat> um, not saying Town Hall 9 is completely dead, especially because base building, as we know, is kind of back in Town Hall 9. Um, so I just feel the balance of the game from 9, 10, and 11 is, is just awesome now. Um, only, yeah, it's amazing. And on each we'll level. Yeah. So I mean, level seven balloons as well, kind of tied in with that. Um, that uh, it's just the same thing, right? I mean, the, the level seven balloons have quite a few more hit points. They can get through more. Um, I'm seeing them a lot of them in clan castles as well, uh, wreaking havoc on uh, groups of Valkyries. Is on top of that. Um, what uh, What are your thoughts about the balloons? Well, my personal thoughts are that they're amazing as a tunnel eleven, but for tunnel tens or nines, it doesn't do too much. 
Uh, I mean, why would you bring a clan castle full of balloons uh, over a lava hound? Yes. Yeah. Just, I mean, just a question. I mean, the lava hound is so much more better at tunnel 10 level and at tunnel 9 level that I don't think uh, for any town halls except for the 11s, it's not going to do much. Yes. Um, it, it's it's straight up for the town hall 11s. I mean, what the only thing I could see it as town hall, like I mentioned, it, it, at 10 or 9 in your defensive clan castles, uh, you are going to get a little more value out of them. But uh, poison spell will still pretty much take out a balloon um so again you still want to have that diversity in your clan castles right don't just start sticking six or seven uh max balloons in your clan castle and expect it to to do anything right no so, not really yeah. <clears throat> um okay so as well on, on top of that oh, bowlers yeah i was gonna say bowlers uh drop down from eight troop space rate to six yeah this makes them interesting uh, I've tried them out a bit myself, and uh, the bowler walks are, are kind of interesting, but at the same time they fill uh, a really niche area. Uh, sometimes they can be really good uh, walking them uh, down somewhere, or they can be used as a two-star strat, I feel, just like Val Valkyries would. Uh, I've, uh, I think in a recent recap you showed one with uh, a lot of bowlers in the, the family scrim. That was a crazy attack that might have gone away with a three-star. Yep. Um, but then again, uh, it feels like they are a lot stronger now. They're usable, um, but yeah, it, they're mainly used for uh, mm -hmm. ring bases as we know them. And yep. um, yeah, that, that's mainly it. I think they are starting to find a little, maybe a little bit of, I mean, I ju literally just showed, I know you can't see it, but I just showed uh, Team Unique bullying a Town Hall 10 and he used a mass bowler uh, with healers and rages and just kind of walked it through the base. Um, again, I think it's very base dependent and, uh, but they they are starting to make more of an appearance, right? Like They're I, strong. They, yeah. they can be a good alternative to Valkyries. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Don't get me wrong, but still, they, they can't jump over walls, so you still need something for the back end. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so I, it's just nice to see. I, I think that was definitely a necessity for bowlers. I mean, they just were not worth it at, at eight troop space, and this makes them a lot more viable. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Um, so the new units, Baby Dragons specifically, um, again, still sort of finding, I mean, at the Town Hall 11 level, somewhat useful uh, you do need to keep them by themselves so they get that rage um, the rage effect on them uh, yeah I've seen a thoughts? couple of uh, newer strats uh, out there on YouTube for example that use ba baby dragons for tunnel 10s to step up towards tunnel 11s and make for a fairly easy two stars on them I think that's their main use uh, for the baby dragons that is um, they are very good at cleaning up around the base. There's a lot beefier than minions, of course, but for 10 troop space, that's quite a bit for just a small unit that's uh, supposed to be on its own. Yeah. Um, I was comparing them when we were talking before. I was comparing them because 10 troop space, that's five minions. And I was a little disappointed at the, I guess, lack of creativity from Supercell on that unit. I mean, you could have named it anything. It could have done the exact same thing. But we decided to name it Baby Dragon when we already have a dragon in the game. I think they could have been a little more creative with that, but it is what it is. So we get Baby Dragons, but um, compared to 10 troop space, compared to 5 minions, say, minions don't have very many hit points. So when I think specifically a huge use for them is the funneling unit because they can they can tank an archer tower a heck of a lot longer. Yeah. yeah, and that, I think that's the main use we're going to see out of them, because they're they're there for tough funnels. If you really don't know how to funnel it with wizards or minions, then the baby dragon will be the way to go. And another thing I wanted to mention is defensive CCs. I mean, if you only have ground troops in them, the baby dragon will rage up and uh, do a lot of damage onto your troops. Yeah. That's a that's a really cool thought as well. So uh, something to think about, guys. You know, you can stick uh, stick a couple Valks in there, a baby dragon, and a wizard or something like that. I think that'd be a pretty uh, powerful defensive CC. Yeah, it does. I've been uh, trying that uh, that exact comp out myself, and it's been doing work on Valkyries and all that stuff. The interesting thing is though that uh, when they're under a poison spell, when they're poisoned, they don't seem to do uh, rage damage anymore. So there might be something to keep in mind. So make sure if you're attacking a, a CC with a baby dragon to poison uh, that baby, because yep. um, I think it loses his uh, rage. Really? Huh. Yep. I, I didn't know that. 
<clears throat> but I mean, you're, <laughs> you definitely want to get that poison down regardless, but I, it Oh yeah, definitely. Obviously depends on the attack, but I mean, you don't want two Valkyries unpoisoned running at your queen, but at the same token, you also don't want a, a baby dragon let loose into the, uh, on your, uh, on the attacking troops, right? Oh, without no, it taken care of, so. Yeah. Okay, so other new unit, the Miner. Uh, we like this one. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because um, I would recommend you guys, anyone out there, to try them out in your CCs. They're cool. And uh, why? Uh, they go underground. They can't be targeted by traps while they're underground or defenses. And they only have 650 HP at max level. But we found that even at level 3, they do... I mean, they can clear most of the back end of a base. And that has really serious implications because um, imagine the, deploying them like hogs, like we have right now with a few extra hogs, and they just go rampant through the base. Yep. So if you're able to clear the, the first, uh, the core sections, so to say, of the base, then clear another 25% with these miners and a few hogs. Um, that only leaves a little, a small, small part of the base for your heroes and kill squad to take out. Yep. So they are really interesting and supported with Hawks. They're really good. I mean, try them out. Really do. Yeah, they are definitely going to find their place in the world of Clash because you you can just look, you can just tell by by using them that very very uh, soon some guys are going to get very creative with uh, with these burrowing units, which uh, obviously Clash of Clans has never seen before. <laughs> um, and they they work, you know. I mean, some of the raids I'm seeing, some of these friendly challenges I'm watching, where guys are uh, testing this out, is just unbelievable how they uh, how they work. And uh, once you've kind of figured them out, I think guys, you will will really like the the minor unit. So, yeah, I mean, let, uh, to talk about the strength of them, just uh, today I had a raid uh, friendly challenge with these minus level three, mind you. Uh, my queen went the wrong way in the attack. My miners went the wrong way. I didn't funnel them, so that's one thing you do need to keep uh, track of, uh, to funnel them in. They aren't like hawks that they target uh, defenses, so you need yep. to, to have a clear path for them. So keep that in mind. But if you, uh, they went the wrong way on my attack, and I still came away with a triple. <laughs> They're that strong. Yep. It's, ri it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I think I think they're going to be a pinnacle unit, uh, especially used, you know, like you said, CCs at Town Hall Mine, um, and and maybe all over the place. Because like, if you can get a good funnel going, and send them directly into the, to some defenses on any base, you're you're going to get really good value out of them. Yep. And for defending these things, uh, what we found out by now is uh, usually skeletons and uh, wizard towers and Tesla farms. Those are the things that uh, counter these uh, bad boys. Because yes. if they're uh, stuck on the stores, for example, while a wizard tower is hitting them, they they just die like any other unit. Yep. So, uh, and skeleton as, as well, they keep them uh, up above the ground because their attack speed is quite low. So um, your main defense against them is spring traps, um, gold storages, and Tesla farms and uh, skeleton traps. So use those to your advantage. Yeah, yeah, and and in similar fashion um, to what you were doing with those those buildings already. Um, just just remember now that the miners in play, it's even more important now that you use your buildings, you know, your high hit point buildings correctly. You, you have a well placed Tesla farm, maybe somewhere in your base, things like that. Because uh, eventually, here as uh, the miners get used more and more, I think it's going to be really important that you uh, you learn to defend that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think they're <clears throat> the thing to defend now. For sure. Uh, so two new dark spells. Uh, yep. Clone spell and Skelly spell. Uh, let's start by discussing maybe the Skelly spell. Not too impressed with it, really. I mean, I haven't seen it used that much. I know some guys have been trying some things with it, but it doesn't seem to be too, too viable at this point. No, I agree. Um, the, one of the few uses uh, I was thinking of is maybe on the back end of a Laloon attack to defend a, a distract, I should say, a wizard tower for a while. Same story with hogs. But why would you take, uh, in an air attack, why would you take some skeletons to distract over a haste? Yes. That's just a, a question now that uh, pops up in my mind. Same story goes for a hog attack. Um, if, if, you're, if you don't need to have two poisons for the enemy heroes or the CC, then sure, you could take it and distract some defenses um, and get some more punch out of your hogs. But I, don't, I think that's about the only reason why I ever would use one. 
Yep. That's sort of the same ish idea about the clone spell. I mean, the clone spell takes four spell slots. I just cannot ever imagine. You know, four spell slots for at level one, you only get 20 true space cloned. So picture, think of it as like four hogs. Well, you're not going to, you're not going to trade four spell slots for four hogs, four extra hogs. That just doesn't make sense. No, I agree. And even <laughs> at max level, it's uh, 30, I believe, or 35 troop space. That's not too much. No. Um, I, I mean, why would you have 30 troops for two spell slots? I would much rather have, for example, my Val Valkyries at the Tunnel 10 raid. I would much rather have them alive and raged up in the core than have, uh, what is it, four extra Valkyries? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's just not it's not quite there. I believe both of those spells at some point fairly soon are going to get revisited by Supercell because I just I don't see them being very viable. Um, I mean, even uh, I know Unique was talking about using a clone spell on the core under a bunch of bowlers and getting some extra bowlers in there. And eh, I kind of but wouldn't you just rather have the four or whatever, I guess, six less bowlers, not even five less bowlers? And two rages, like it just doesn't. I don't know. I, no, the one uh, use that y the most of the YouTubers have already uh, discussed is uh, to have some flanking hawks and only a few of them, and then clone those hawks and uh, try to get as many buildings out of the way. But on the same token, once again, uh, you could heal those hawks and have a couple of extra hawks and save two spells for the slots. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully those get revisited because I think they need some tweaks because I just I cannot. Cannot see how, how they would be war viable, at least. At the moment, no. I yeah. agree. Um, so the spring traps, we forgot about those. Well, yeah, I was going to talk about the upgrades to the building. So that's spring trap oh, okay. and the cannon, obviously, at 14. Cannon, real quick, great. Cannon, level 14, town hall 11. Don't think that needs any discussion. <laughs> um, but cool. Uh, and spring traps. That is huge, actually. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, a level 2 spring trap can now trigger two uh, Valkyries. Mm-hmm. So that's big, but uh, is Valkyrie ever going to trigger a spring trap, even if it's placed well? <laughs> it's hit or miss. You can't rely on it. That's for sure. No. Uh, I've seen so many spring traps get triggered by Valkyries, but they just walk over and never ever pop up. Uh, it, it sometimes happens, but uh, I rarely see more than uh, two Valkyries pop up. Uh, I mean, get springed. In a raid. In a whole raid. I don't think it's going to hel uh, help much, to be fair. And I think it's a combination of A, how fast they are, and B, I was talking to you about how you can judge where a hog's going to stop on your defense, right? So you can pretty much, you know, a spring trap raid in between two defenses, three hogs are going to gonna go to that middle of that defense first. But you can't really say that about Valks, because Valks are always going to kind of shift to one side of the defense where there's more buildings, I guess. Um, so I think it's just really difficult when you're placing your spring traps to judge where a Valk's going to stop, right? Yeah, but even worse, they are attracted to touching buildings. And yeah. how are you going to place a spring trap uh, into in touching, touching buildings? touching buildings, yeah, exactly. So, so in my opinion, uh, the use of spring traps hasn't changed. Um, I would actually really still recommend to upgrade them one level because uh, one extra springed up Valk, I mean, that's worth it. Um, but more than that, I mean, yeah, the extra barb doesn't make the difference in a raid. No, absolutely yeah. not. I mean, when you're maxed, you might obviously going to want to max them, but um, <laughs> realistically, I think they needed to do this. You know, I, when we were talking about the last update with how powerful the Valkyries have got with the increased attack speed, um, I had suggested this as maybe something <laughs> that could help the defense of the Valks because they just seem so overpowered. And I think it's the fact that there is a small chance that you can trigger two. That's all we needed, right? Like, is, yep. there's a, there's a lot of other balanced things. So I do like like the fact that they added this, even though it's still going to be very very difficult to manage to get two Valkyries to spring a tring, uh, to spring one trap. Yeah, I mean, try to to have two Valkyries uh, st stop at the same uh, tile. <laughs> on yeah. the raid it's Good not going to happen Good so luck. in my opinion just keep your springs for hogs and uh keep them that way they're yeah. they're worth more and then and then the off chance that it happens awesome right and that's that's kind of where where we're at with that i think yep <clears throat> um okay so i think that covered all the sort of upgrades and new content well not new content but new units or new upgrades or anything like that 
Um, real quickly, I just want to talk about uh, the they changed you know the chat they changed a lot of cosmetic stuff um i wasn't a fan of i don't know why they had to, to switch the freaking chat from the top to the bottom of your chat screen <laughs> maybe it's just because my muscle memory is always looking to the top and now i have to look to the bottom i just find that annoying and i, I don't know why they had to switch that i it just it just made no sense to me but um something well, I, it does make sense i mean why? it's uh, time wise you read from top to bottom. It's just like uh, most of the chat apps use it from top to bottom as well. So, so it does the, make sense to me. You'll read the oldest, yeah, the oldest message first. I don't know. I, again, I think it's more just because that's where my muscle memory is, and it's just annoying for me that they changed it. <laughs> 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 kind of like when they change the war details button, right to the bottom oh, yeah. right of the screen instead of at the top. Like that was just uh, to me just a pointless change. Um, one thing I really. Oh, Sorry, I'm gonna decline that. One thing I really hope they implement is uh, I know I, I sent out a tweet. I got a lot of likes on a lot of discussion about it. Was adding a chat tab for the friendly challenges and sort of the results of the friendly challenges because the 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 war the, you know the clan chat is just too chaotic. I mean, yeah, I agree. Donation requests getting missed because they just get pushed right up to the top, and um, so hopefully they're looking at that because I know there's been a lot of feedback about having another chat tab just for uh, specifically for the friendly challenges. Um, some other cool things. Again, we were talking about you can drag drag the troops in production and switch them around, but we don't think that works right now for some reason. For um, me, it doesn't work. At least I don't know. Um, as well, you can gem, uh, you know, gem right from the uh, context uh, menu or whatever. Uh, public war, you, you have your warlock public. So for some clans, I think that's really cool. Um, you know, it will help good clans with good records. I think attract good people, guys that maybe you know not very top tier war clans that don't have a website and don't have all these other other resources, I guess, other than the forums to attract people to their clan. Even if your warlogs, just if you have a nice warlog, a good warlog, a lot of wins, and other people can see that, they will start trying to join your clan. So I think that was a good thing. Plus, I do like the fact that you have the option. Like that, that was a very important aspect of that as well. Um, the builder suggestions, I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> Mine always say spring traps. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not going up to level three spring traps. Shut up, builders. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, the live spectator thing, I think that's kind of annoying in the sense where I don't think you should be able to, the attacker, the guy who's doing the attack, I don't think he should be able to see that. I agree on that one. It it makes you nervous if you see uh, 50 people watching you doing a live war attack. I Absolutely. Mean, in a, and an enraged war. Okay, sure, you know, everyone's watching you. You yeah. just know. You know. But at the same time. Uh, seeing a number of 50 and dropping down as you're uh, failing the attack. I mean, come on, man. Here's a is question. that really necessary? <laughs> Here's a question. What is the maximum amount of spectators? Do you know that? I don't know. I believe 50, but I'm not sure. No, it cannot be 50 unless they increased it. Maybe. I don't know. I, don't I, don't know. Know. I guess we'll see. Hopefully they did increase it. I don't know. Some things were happened that weren't necessarily in the patch notes. Like something you had mentioned which I hope they implement to the edit screen, which again, we're gonna talk about the war edit in one second here, but in your just home base, your farming base, if you drag a structure and put it over top another structure, it will swap it automatically for you, which I thought was cool. And that was not in the patch notes as far as I remember. No, I discovered that on accident. It was really funny. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Try it out, guys. It works on your home farm base, but does not work in the edit mode for some reason, which obviously it would only make sense to work in the edit mode. So hopefully they fix that and change that because I think that's a really cool thing. So a lot, so many times I have to, I'll click on a building and I'll hit remove and then move the building and have to add the other building when I could just swap them, right? So Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, so I think that covered most of the cosmetic stuff, just the little things, uh, other than obviously two of the biggest things that, uh, were awesome for us. Number one being the, the war base edit mode. I know you as a, our base builder leader in the clan, that must be just a huge, huge thing for you. Um, tell me about the changes with the edit mode and what you like and don't like. Well, being able to move the whole base uh, is amazing to Huge. me because uh, it happens so often that you start a base uh, around your queen, obviously, and then you're like, mm, I need to move the whole thing one space, even though it's just a start, um, because uh, I'm going to touch the edges here and I need to go across. 
Yeah. So even if it's just uh, like 10% of the base, it's still annoying. So that's the one thing I really like. Also with uh, copying bases, this makes copying bases that much more easy. Because uh, I've heard so many people complain that they um, uh, messed it up just a touch and then it didn't fit. They're two tiles off and they can't fit that one building on the outside. And yep. I remember that. I'll never forget this. Okay, When Iron Wolf was back in our clan, I... I was new to base building. So, and again, this was way back. We're talking like, what, like eight months ago since he's been in the clan? I don't remember. But um, I finally built a base that he approved of, for the most part. Mm -hmm. The main thing he said I need to do, though, he's like, the only problem is this base needs to shift two squares to the left. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, I know, I know. He's like, just take the time and move the walls. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so I literally had to move all, I did it. I ended up doing it, but it was so annoying. And I, from that day on, I'm like, they need to move all buttons. So I was really pumped to see that. Yeah, it's amazing. And also the the button underneath it, the view walls button. I mean, it's really easy. I mean, I really recommend using this one because it is the best way to see gaps in your base, first of all. Yep. And second of all, to spot valuable uh, jumps or earthquakes. Yep. Same thing with the scout mode. I, like, I really like that scout one as well. Scout is amazing. Um, I use this to, I mean, we're going to use this within the clan to actually um, try and have people do actual war hits. Yep. So uh, we're going to practice war hits and we're going to use the scout mode to send the bases to other people so they can actually prepare a, a good hit on it. Yeah, and they won't know where the traps are. It'll be completely, you know, legit. Um, we got some really cool things planned with the with the friendly challenges here that uh, we will get into in a sec. I just want to finish covering the uh, edit mode. Um, but that's pretty... What else are we missing from that? Yeah, the uh, photo mode, which is all, photo obviously mode. awesome. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's just from a base building perspective. I mean, if you want to ever share your base in any way or get it reviewed, this is amazing. Just simple change, but it's a quality of life change. Absolutely. Um, so does that cover the edit mode, though? I think it, so, right? yeah. Okay, so last and definitely not least, friendly challenges. Um, awesome. We're hooked. I mean, I remember I saw the Power Bang video where he was talking about, he's like, I'm addicted. <laughs> and I think <laughs> our whole clan is addicted. Everyone's addicted. It's so much fun, especially for guys. I was thinking about, and this is my issue right now, is like I have 70 wall pieces to go. I just want to finish that. You know what I mean? So I haven't spent a ton of time doing friendly challenges. However, when I do finish that, that's all you're going to have to do. So I'm th I was thinking about these other guys that have been max nine forever, right? Mm -hmm. What do they do for fun? Like there was nothing to draw them into the game other than war. So some of these guys we had in our clan that we felt were inactive, it, part of it was, well, they're max. So why other than war would they log on, right? There's nothing to do. Now I it's agree. now it's endless opportunities with this. Um yeah, it kind of sucks about the 24-hour cooldown. Obviously, but it's necessary. This was necessary. For sure. But um, at the same time, I really like how South fans uh, called it. He said, like, uh, yeah, our, our clan, they're like a bunch of little kids in a candy store. And yeah. not just that, no, they got free money. Yep. <laughs> yep, they got it. It's, I, the way I was talking is like, you, you, we were in an arcade with unlimited quarters. I love it. <laughs> and... Uh, I have never seen the clan so active. Part of it is, yeah, the, the chat's so spammed with these friendly challenges that that needs to change. But the activity and just discussion and, you know, like even just something as simple as I built a new base for our range war this weekend, did it, if, you know, four or five days early and Tested. I can have people test it. Right, yep. and I can look for the exploits, look for the weaknesses, adjust my queen chamber or bomb place or whatever. Right, like it's just awesome. It's helping base building and attacking in the same token. I think the whole world of Clash of Clans is just going to improve because of this. Yeah, and just imagine if you build a war base, um, have someone uh, just drop twenty hawks in there from any angle. Yeah, just look at the path. You just needed to do it three or four times, but you can check: are my spring traps working? Are my DGB sets working? Um, Stuff like that. What's uh, what's the actual uh, lure range for my CC? Is it possible? Yes or no? Uh, will I have to invest like uh, two or three giants to get the c full CC lure? Yes yeah. or no? Those things are really valuable, and we can just test them now. B previously, I had to do it in war and um, just hope for the best, basically, and think about it why. But now I can just test it. Oops, I don't want to show this one. But yeah, uh, the possibilities with this are endless, and I. 
I think it was such a needed thing for Clash. And you know what? I look at the big picture, right? They first banned the, banned the third-party modding, right? They started banning people. They did a couple rounds of bans. So people lost their accounts. They definitely sparked enough of a scare, I guess you could say, with guys using those third-party programs that they don't want to risk their accounts to do that. So they had to do that as a first step, though, to implement all these things we see today because they could not have these friendly challenges and the modding active, right? It just... It would not work. Um, so I see the big picture now and sort of the step-by-step -step process they had to go through to, to to release this update. And I just think for the first time ever in my Clash history, overall, I want to give a two thumbs up to this update. And I'm really excited for, uh, for the future of Clash Clans now. Yeah, I am too. It's amazing. And we're having so much fun. And uh, I can only imagine every single War Clan being amazing at the game now. I yeah. mean, the amount of practice that goes into this is uh, is so cool. Yep, absolutely. Yep, for sure. Um, anything else you want to add at this point? Uh, no, except for that, I'm really excited to do the the Slay My Base episodes now because no. uh, we're we're actually going to try and do live attacks uh, on those uh, yep. bases. That was the last thing I wanted to mention. Was this definitely is going to have an effect on our Slay My Base series? I had talked about it in our last one that we did. I think our idea here is both Kadic and I are going to take one of the bases that we like. Um, so we generally will show uh, four or five bases. The first few we just kind of skim through because there's usually glaring issues and we pick a couple that we like for the last couple that we show. So what we're going to do with those last couple is actually build those bases ourselves. We're going to kind of cut a little bit of time at the beginning, maybe just show one or two quick ones and then actually go in and break down the base that we've built and the other guy is gonna attack it. So I'll build one, we're gonna talk about it and the Caddick's gonna go in and hit it or something like that. We're still not 100% how because obviously it's gonna be a little easier because we know where the traps are. Um, however, it's still gonna be a really cool thing I think to watch, watch us talk about it and then actually attack it live and, and try and execute everything that we just talked about. Absolutely, and then again, to be fair, a second hit in war, that's the one you want to defend. I mean, the first one you, you can defend. Um, I mean, if you're able to defend twice in war, you've more than pulled your weight with uh, defending. Uh, so that's your goal anyway. Yep. So this is an amazing practice uh, to show uh, the exploits we talked about during uh, the Slay My Base episode. For sure. So uh, I think we should be rolling that out. Um, I will, uh, I'm will. i going to get another round of bases out to all of us. Um, and again, some of them are going to be sort of, sort of older design still. We're just trying to fly through these now. I might, uh, we're going to, I'm going to really expedite the process to skip through some of the bases that aren't, uh, aren't quite up to par or definitely guys that haven't watched the base building videos. Um, so hopefully we can catch up a lot quicker. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this weekend, we'll have that first episode uh, locked and loaded for, uh, for the public. So uh anything else buddy no man i think uh we covered it all beautiful let's wrap this up then uh that'll do it here for your wisdom from wiser just trying to help you bag that next tree star till then i'm out